I know something about you that you may not even know yourself. You lost an organ, crucial for life. And this holds true for each and every single one of you. The reason why we can sit here and listen to TED Talks is because we had this organ once, in the beginning of our lives. I'm talking about the placenta, or afterbirth. Throughout the pregnancy, the baby is connected via the umbilical cord to the placenta, which in turn anchors into the uterus of the mother. It's a fascinating organ, and it has versatile functions. But you can imagine it like a filter between the blood of the mother and the blood of the baby. The placenta ensures that there are enough nutrients and oxygen getting through to the baby so it can breathe and grow. And it also functions like a barrier towards harmful influences. Bacteria, for example, are normally kept out of the baby circulation to keep it healthy. And although this organ is so important for a successful pregnancy, we know so little about it. And we're having a hard time predicting what can actually pass from the mother's blood to the baby. What happens when the mother takes medication? Will it reach the baby? Well, if you belong to the very brave people who ever read a medication leaflet, all the way from the beginning to the ending, you may have noticed that this read would have been a lot shorter if you were pregnant. Often, there's just one sentence included, saying, if you're pregnant, ask a doctor. Let me translate that for you. The author basically wants to tell us that there's no way to test substances for the use during pregnancy. Now, I've always been fascinated by drugs. Um, <laughs> Let, let me rephrase that. Um, I've always been super interested in how active substances act on the human body. <laughs> because we're surrounded by them basically every day. And I always wanted to know more about that. And I also always wanted to help people. That's why after graduating from high school, I went to work in the rescue service. And that was a great time. Sometimes I was able to help people. Although it felt like most of the times we had to do paperwork. Uh, it was in Germany, after all. <laughs> and I also took the chance to ask my coworkers about medication and how it works. And I would bug them over and over. And in the beginning, they were super happy that I was interested. But eventually, they'd have some important paperwork to do. So I still wanted to know in detail how substances act. And so I studied human biology, where I learned about how the human body works in health and in disease, how to develop active substances, and how to test them. And the answer to how substances act on the human body is that it depends on the system you test them on. Nowadays, it's a requirement for medicine to be tested in animals before they get to the human. But we know that rats are not tiny humans. They work differently. And especially when it comes to pregnancy, this is evolutionary seen the most distant process between humans and animals. So if we want to learn more about pregnancy, and the placenta, which develops differently and looks differently in mice, for example, we won't get far with animal models. Now, in science, we're used to complex topics, and we break them down to a simple aspect to start with. And the most simple method we have in biological labs to investigate substances is the so-called cell culture. You basically have a Petri dish, and you culture human cells on it. 
the cells, they adhere to glass or plastic and in a two-dimensional environment. And too often, this model is too simple because in real organs, we have a 3D environment. Cells are surrounded by other cells, by other cell types. And there's something which is called the extracellular matrix, giving the shape to the organ and holding the cells together. So let's just call it cell glue. And you can imagine the consistency like a soft gummy bear. And it's also very important, the cell glue, to give signals to the cells about where they are and which function they need to adopt. So it's common sense nowadays in science that this 3D environment is necessary for a normal cell function and for meaningful testing and research. Now, to learn more about human organs, do we need real human organs in the lab? I will tell you something. We can now 3D bioprint human organs. It may seem like science fiction to you, but just like the self-ordering diaper, the future is here. <laughs> My team and I developed a 3D printer with which we can print living, functional, biological tissues. So what I do every day is I print the human placenta. And I want to tell you how I do it. So besides the 3D printer, I need three more components. I use the cells that would otherwise grow in a petri dish. I actually use different cell types as they occur in the real placenta. And then I also need the cell glue, giving the shape in the end. And we can actually produce this cell glue in a liquid form in our lab. And we can then selectively gelate it by the exposure of light. And then I also need to tell the printer in which shape I want to have the object in the end. So I need to make a 3D computer model. And after doing a lot of research about how the placenta is built up, what its functions are, and what is really crucial, what I need to have in my model, I came up with a 3D model. I came up with a disk. No joke. <laughs> this, the beauty lies in its simplicity. So I introduce all the three components into the printer. I mix the cells into the liquid cell glue. I put it into the printer. And in the printer, the liquid is exposed to light in the shape of the computer model. And this is how the printing process looks like. In the end, I have a little gummy bear <laughs> with cells in it. And this is my hand, no giant hand. Um, and you can see that it's pretty small. The actual placenta is like this big, maybe. But it contains the same components. So it works just like the real placenta just on a smaller scale. And I've been talking about 3D printing so far. Probably it would be more accurate to talk about 4D printing because now we need another dimension, time. After the printing process is complete, I need to make sure that the cells, they feel as if they were in our body. I put them in a nutritious media, in a liquid, in its components similar to the human blood, and I keep it at body temperature, 37 degrees. And then over time, I see something amazing. I see that the cells, they grow and divide, and they interact with their environment, and they actually remodel it. That means that they're building their own environment, and that is the most natural form you can have because the cells know the best how their environment is supposed to be like. 
And at this point, further research can be conducted. You can now test if a substance can pass from the one side to the other and what it does to the tissue in between. In this way, you may have a better approximation what will happen to an unborn if the mother takes a substance. You can also investigate what happens if the pregnant woman is exposed to particles or chemicals in her environment or to food additives. And my vision is to improve healthcare for pregnant women with 3D bioprinting. You could also investigate what happens, for example, in an infection with the Zika virus. And in the best case, the 3D bioprinted mini placenta will be able to eliminate the one sentence in the medication leaflet, the German way, by replacing it with even more text. <laughs> And now you may ask yourself, how does that impact you? Because we figured you already lost the placenta some time ago. Well, in the same way that we can print a mini placenta, we can print other mini organs, which are important for substance metabolism in the mom-to-be, but also in you and me. And if you think a little further, if today we are already able to print functional mini-organs, what does the future hold? Currently, science is learning from printing mini-organs what cells need to function naturally. And we're already able to print blood vessels, which are important to supply a bigger print with nutrients. So in a few decades, Doctors might be able to get back to 3D bioprinted whole organs for transplantation to overcome the shortage in donor organs we're facing today. In the meantime, take care of the organs you have because we cannot print them just yet. Thank you.